Good day to each and everyone. My name is Justin Balasanas and I am the first reporter of Group 1 and we will be discussing about natural law. So for our introduction, let me read to you what is presented in the PowerPoint. Natural and a natural law or a natural can be defined as, as number one, to be used to refer to a characteristic or an idea in which happens naturally without being initiated or implemented. So what, what this means is that natural can be determined through an idea nga mahitabo siya naturally. So for example, when a grown woman reach maturity, so syempre, naagi na siya mahitabo nga menstruation. So that's naturally. Wala, wala yung nagsugo nga, uy, dapat dugo na ka ha, kung maabot ka puberty. So mo na uh, first definition of natural. Second, is used to justify a certain way of behaving by seeing its likeness somewhere in the natural world. So ang gihapag ani nga example sa um, module or sa text, gingon ani is, for example, na yung usaka laki, dahil yung nakita niya nga, ang usaka layon, is pwede da siya mangita og daghan nga partners nga iyang anakan. So kato nga laki mo assume siya nga kani maganing layon o nangita maganing daghag paris nga bae nga lioness nga pwede niya anaon para makaanak. Ako pod. Kay it's natural man for the lion to have many akanang many lioness nga iyahang maanakan. So mo na siyang ikaduha nga gihatag nga example niya nga it is a way of behaving by seeing its likeness somewhere in the natural world. Number three, so natural refers to what seems common to a particular group or environment. So very understandable rakaayo, so mo ni nag-refer siya o unsay common sa osaka group or environment. So for example, uh, kanang sanina, the way we dress. So it is important, bisa kita, gianak ta nga, wala tayo sanina, hubo yung tatanan, pero magsanina ta, ano man, it's natural for us nga magsuot ta. It's, it is also common sa itong environment nga magsuot kita sanina. No, even though nga we are born nga walay sa plot. Okay. For the next uh, topic, we will be discussing about Thomas Aquinas. So, kinsa man si Thomas Aquinas? Now, kani si Thomas Aquinas, usan ni siya ka philosopher? And then, he has a theory, grounded his theory to Christian faith. Now, we are discussing about natural law. No, uh, by the word itself, duha ka buok, natural law. Natural means, of course, mo na na ko nga tulo ka definition. And the second word is law. Pasabot na to aning law, di ba? Very understandable na nata idea. Law means uh, a certain prohibition nga gihatag sa usaka system para sundun sa mga tao. Diba? That is what we, uh, that is the definition of law. Now, kani a uh, very important lang atong i-anchor ang natural law to Christian faith. So, sa natural law, ingon si Thomas Aquinas, Aquinas rather nga Christian faith uh, grounded his theory on Christian faith where God is the mighty creator and supreme being that creates all life forms in the universe. So, naagyoy God. So, kita may dili motoo Ginoo. So, syempre kita do siguro tanan no, motoo kita Ginoo. So, muna siya nga, ang natural law is anchored to God. So, ingon po siya diri nga, Aquinas ethics explores on how our pursuit of happiness directs our action towards specific ends. So, natay duha ka terms diri. Number one is pursuit of happiness. Ikaduha is specific ends. Unahan na tagtakal ang pursuit of happiness. Now, pursuit of happiness means ang imuhang right para mangita sa imong own happiness, imong own interest, kung asa ka ganahan. Ganahan baka magduwag volleyball, ganahan baka into music baka, or are you into uh, book reading? So, mga pursuit of happiness. Nga imuhang right nga to acquire that uh, that thing para to your own happiness. Dayon, ingon siya nga, it, it directs ko no towards a specific end. Masa so, may pasabot o specific end. By the word itself, specific end, na ay tumong. Specific end. So, na akay tumong ana sa imuhang paglipay-lipay. No, wala na kagpaglipay-lipay para wala tumong. So, mo ana gi gi itakala na niya. Okay, number three. He also emphasized that we human beings have cons- consent, conscience rather, that directs our moral thinking and intellectual capacity to be rational. Thus, we can conclude that we are dominant in other forms of life in this universe. So, nag-base man si Aquina sa Bible, no, na adihagi istoryaan sa Genesis, no, nga kita human beings, kita ang mag, uh, we are dominant 
sa other life forms kita ang alaga nila kumbaga so gi emphasize diha ni Thomas Aquinas nga kita nga mga human beings have intellectual capacity to be rational so syempre kita na agid tay capacity to think no kung asay maayo asay dili asay pwede himuon asay moral asay ethical so mo ni ni Thomas Aquinas nga kita nga human beings are dominant in other forms of life in the universe and the lastly number four Money pinaka importante is God is the basis and foundation of natural law. So giingon na ko ganiha nga kaning natural law para masabtan ginato ang natural law, we need to ground ourselves sa principles ni God. And I will give the next topic to the next reporter. Good day everyone. I am the next reporter and I will be tackling the Greek heritage, particularly the Neoplatonic good. God cares for and governs the activity of the universe and of every creature. Everything we saw and everything we have now are all created by God, and we should live in harmony with it. As supposed from Plato's work entitled The Republic, Plato was trying to envision the ideal society. So, what's an ideal society? So, it is a society where everyone will live harmoniously with each other, kanang way gubos, and... But how can we live in harmony with our society? Plato was also trying to answer such questions as why should I bother trying to be good and why cannot good be just whatever I say it is? Nga no makinahanglan man ta mag binuutan, nga no kailangan man ta magbuhat og mga maayo nga butang. And according to him, we should have a objective basis or standard for our morals since lahi lahi man ta og perceptions of what is good or what is not. In Plato's work, The Republic presented the idea of the good, which has become a source of fascination and inspiration to scholars who are tasked to decipher the wealth of ideas there. So, according to, for Plato, the idea of good is the source. It is the source of all beings and is even the cause of all being. In line with Socrates' idea of good, nga, it is real and. It is real and it is not something that anyone can pretend to make up or ignore. And the scholars who are tasked to clarify and elaborate the text of Plato's were called as Neoplatonists. So, mone sila mo'y nag-elaborate or nag-interpret sa mga works ni Plato's. Good day, my name is Cecil Hawk and I am going to talk about Aristotelian being and becoming. So, according to his ancient work, there are four causes behind all the trends in the world. They are the material cause, the formal cause, the efficient cause, and the final cause. So, what is material cause? Material cause of which is a thing is made of. Just like for example, a table is made up of wood. And the second is formal cause. Formal cause is the shape or a blueprint that informs the material of a being. So, a table is, for example, the table is, a shape of a table is round. And the second, uh, the third one is efficient. Efficient is the process or activity by which a thing is set into a motion or brought to rest. For example, the efficient cause is the mover, the causes the things to be or happen. For example, the camp, the carpenter, so ang naghimo sa table. So the fourth is efficient cause. So lastly is the final cause, the end goal of the object or what the object is good for. So for example, that the purpose. What is the purpose of the table? So. A table's final cost is to be used to a, pla to a place of food or other things on. That's all. Good day, everyone. I am Chorizo May Akaak, and I am here to talk about synthesis. Um, so, according to Aquinas, God is that which is essentially good. He argues that participation in God's goodness is the only way for all beings to exist. God's love and will are the source of everything and God intends for good to be added to everything. Even though God creating, created beings to be good, their goodness is still imperfect. 
um, only God in all of His goodness and fullness is perfect. So, um, bisag unsa ta ka maayo paggama sa ginoo no? Kay dili gyud ta perfect kay siya ra gyud ang perfect. Um, divine providence is the process by which living things are correctly arranged and led to their intended location. The goodness of God is the ultimate goal of all actions and everything was created with the intention of returning to him. So kita gigamat ta kay para mubalik ra gyud sa Ginoo. And as a result, it is absolutely necessary for us to have a capacity for, for reason as one of our primary characteristics. Creation is the result of God's love and will. God intends good for everything that exists. Being perfect means living up to our nature to the fullest and realizing who God created us to be. By utilizing the potential that are already present in our nature, we accomplish this. Knowing and loving God is the only way we can reach God because we are rational beings. Good day everyone, I'm Dosian and I'm the next reporter. So today I'm going to tackle about the essence of the law. So what is law and what's it for? So laws are the formal rules that society makes for itself. According to Aquinas, Law is a kind of direction or measure for human activity through which a person is led to do something or held back. So laws are made for various reasons. Number one, they are to settle arguments. For example, naglalis ang inyong mga silingan. Number two, to maintain a peaceful order. For example, rules and regulations like first come first serve policy sa mga kanang kananan. And third, to promote justice or fairness for every citizen. There are four characteristics of a law. Number one, law is an order. It is a supreme order, and it binds or obligates a person to a particular behavior. For example, road rules and regulations sa kalsada, speed limit, we are obliged to follow the rules so as to prevent accident from happening, because if not, we will be held accountable for our responsibility. Number two, law is directed toward the common good. This means law is meant to further the interests and overall happiness of the community para sa ikabubuti, para sa kalina o kaayuhan sa tanan. Number three, law is an order made by someone who, who cares for the community. Money ang local order. For example, bawal mangihi diri, bawal maglabay o basura diri, or avoid, avoid smoking in public places. And the last, number four, law must be promulgated. This means the law must be publicized. The people must be notified of the laws in order to be obliged to abide. Thank you. Good day, everyone. I am Jolie Asignor, and I am the next reporter. And I'll be talking about the varieties of law. Okay, so um, we have noticed earlier how God, by His wisdom, is the creator of all beings. By seeing this, we do not only recognize God as the source of these beings, but also acknowledge the way they have been created and the way they could return to Him, which is the work of His divine reason itself. So uh, there are four types of uh, laws according to Aquinas. And these are the eternal law, the natural law, the human law, and the divine law. So first, um, the eternal law. So the line he governs all the acts and movements that are to be found in each single creature. So the type of divine wisdom as moving all things to their due end bears the character of law. By Aquinas involves the assertion that the divine wisdom that directs each being towards its proper end can be called eternal law. So eternal law refers to what God wills for creation, how each participant in its intended to return to him. And all things partake in eternal law Meaning, all beings are already created by God in a certain way intended to return to Him. And on the uh, second, on the other hand, um, human beings' participation is different. The human being, as rational, participates more fully and perfectly in the law given the capacity for reason. So the unique important upon us, upon our human nature by God, is the capacity to think what is good and what is evil, and to choose and direct ourselves appropriately. So, uh, this is what we call the natural law. 
Alright, so the next is the human law that refers to all instances wherein human beings construct and enforce laws in their communities. So finally, Aquinas asked us to recall that there is a certain form of happiness that is proportionate to our human nature, which we can obtain by means of our natural principles. And also happiness that surpasses human's nature as supernatural happiness that can be obtained through the power of God alone. And lastly, to direct us to our natural, I mean supernatural end, we have been given further instructions in the form of divine law, which refers, uh, speci which refers specifically to the instances where we have precepts or instructions that come from divine revelations. So, um, for example, the Ten Commandments. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Ron Edmar Kualmudal, and my topic is all about Natural Law by Thomas Aquinas. So I'll be concise about my topic. Natural Law holds that there are universal moral standards that are inherent in humankind throughout all time, and these standards should form the basis of a, ju of a just society. Human beings are not na taught natural, per se, but rather we discover. We, di we discover it by consistently making choices for good instead of evil. So, natural law in common with other beings. Human beings are both unique and at the same time participating in the community of the rest of creation. Aquinas identifies that there, are, that there is in our nature have commons with all other beings a desire to preserve one's own being. Our presence is special and share something in the nature of other beings. So, dili, kita mga tao dili ra kay gapuyot ta sa nature tungod kay tungod kay gashare sa mga um, about sa nature pero makighalubilo po ta sa ubang mga beings like animals and whatsoever. That's all. My name is Mark Arneta and I will be be the one who, who will report the in common with other animals. Okay, if you say in common with other animals, the first thing that will uh, that will come to your mind is the similarity of human to animals. Like it is said in the con context of Aquinas that then then goes to the say that there is in our human nature common with other animals. Just like what I have said, um, the humans and animals has similarities to the not in terms of physicality uh, physical but also in the the characteristics like um, um, the animals can be assertive when uh, you touch the the when you touch their babies or their offsprings and just like to the human being uh, the human being will um, immediately uh, avenge if if they they knew that somebody is um, um, trying to harm their child. Okay, the, the next one is that the common things between human and other animals are the cap capability to produce uh, such such what he calls sexual interaction and reproduction. So sexual interaction can be also possible to add to, to the animals. Like many animals ca has um, has an urge to uh, to be in the in the what we call uh, sex. Uh, sex to create an offspring. That's it. Oh. Uniquely human. Okay, for the uniquely human, we have the inclination, inclination according to Aquinas. Okay, human beings are all, are uniquely in the image of God among material creatures. Just what the previous reporter said that um, uh, human human being has inclination towards the others human being. A human being is a human body, namely a rational. And sens sensitive living body, or special anatomy and abilities as, such as a big brain and opposed thumbs, have enabled us to change our world dramatically.